Hello and welcome Grotty fans to something a little bit special to start the year. This is my first look and review of the Space Marine Astraeus Super Heavy Tank. So the Astraeus Super Heavy Tank comes in one of these beautiful Titan boxes from Forge World. Um, it's a bit of a tricky one to film so we'll see how we get on. But as you can see it's got lovely artwork on the front but nothing to do with the tank itself. Now when we open it up we get to see a sea of bubble wrap and that's quite interesting the way sort of boxes sort of fall on open here a big pile of bags so let's start pulling some of these out and taking a little look uh, so we've got a little box here this looks like our kind of main guns um oh the banana a little bit but that should be fairly easy to straighten out with a hairdryer uh we've got a big bag of bits two Three, so four bags of bits. Put those to one side. And then wrapped in bubble wrap here, we've got what looks to be kind of the main hull of our tank. <clears throat> and somewhere in here, we should have some instructions. So there's our instructions. <clears throat> the Astraea Super Heavy Tank, armed with an array of heavy weapons. Uh, including paired macro accelerator cannon. The Astraea Super Heavy Tank is a vehicle dedicated to smashing open enemy formations and battle lines using its enhanced repulsor banks to carry it over any obstacle in its way. The Astraea's ability to waste... What? The Astraea's ability to waste two vehicles and fortifications, quality uh, English there, is matched only by its ability to withstand damage as it's... Layered void shields can shrug off all but the most devastating weapon strikes. Um, I think the way that was written looks like it might have been the work experience kid. But we've got a lovely set of kind of full CAD designed uh, instructions. They look fairly straightforward. I am not looking forward to fitting all the million grav plates on there. Although looking at it. Am I lucky? Yes, grav plates are already attached. Thank God for that. Oh, that was going to be a nightmare. Oh, no. There's some that need fitting. That's going to be fun. But we'll see how we get on when we get to building it. First, though, let's take a look at the parts. So we get a great big base. That is Kjauge. And this was checked on the 26th of November 2021 by KR. So if we've got any problems, we get to blame KR. Right, let's get this out of the way so we can start looking at some of the bits. Okay, so the first bit, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit now. We're gonna take a look at is, this looks like our kind of main hull. So we've got a little bit of flash and stuff, that should be fairly easy to clean. Bit ugly, but nothing too outrageous um, so far. No sort of major mold slips or anything like that, which is pretty good. I have to say, um, I'm going to say it now and then I'm going to prove wrong in a moment, but Forge World seem to have upped their game a little bit and I seem to be finding a lot less kind of problems with them than I used to. So that's great to see. Um, then we've got this little box here and in here we've got our two macro accelerator cannons which are well that one's in okay condition just needs a little bit of straightening up a little bit of a mold line but nothing serious a bit banana but again nothing too serious for the cleanup so i'm happy with that no idea what these are but they are absolutely banana so we'll see what they are when we get to them so start on the bits bags so first bag of bits, I've just grabbed one at random. What have we got in here? Um, look at that, that is a chunky base uh, kind of flying stand for this thing. I suppose it's going to need it, but seriously, that is huge. And then, so that's the bit that you're going to glue down and then that'll be it going in the tank. That's quite nice, it sort of locks in place there. Stop it rotating on the base once you put it on there. That's quite neat. Um, so that's our flying stand. Then we've got some thrusters. 
Nothing too outrageous. A little bit of a uh, slip there, but nothing too bad. Clean that up with a bit of sandpaper. That one looks pretty clean. Yeah, that one's pretty clean. Some sort of little blocky thing. Beautiful, nice sharp lines. Very well done. Uh, they look like knee joints, but obviously they can't be. So I assume some sort of like turret mount or something. Let's have a look. Um, pipes. Much to say there. Some banana looking stubber. That is, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that is. Yeah, that is well banana. Uh, that's all right. Nice bit of clean. A couple of void shields. Pretty nicely set up. That's our heavy bolters and lance cannons. They've drilled them out a little bit, but they could have gone a little bit deeper than that, but that's not a big deal. I can do that nice and easy with a pin vise. And then we've got a few funny little pipes and pistons. They all look pretty good, to be honest. So let's push those to one side and look at the next pile of bits. So, next bag we have got some chunky bits. <clears throat> right, so in here we have got what looks to be a chunk of hull. This is the one that I'm always worried about the uh, mould slips and things on because it's the big bits they normally do it on. But, to be fair to them, that is very clean. Uh, it's going to be a little bit annoying getting these off and uh, making sure it's a nice clean fit, but I don't know if that's going to be visible anyway. Probably not. So yeah, I'm actually very happy with that. That's a good piece of work. Um, the aforementioned dreaded grav plates. These are going to be a pain to fit. But at least these seem in pretty reasonable condition. Obviously a little bit of flash and things, but you're going to get that. I'm not worried about that. At all. So we've got loads of these grav plates. Seem okay so far. Yep. Last ones. Oh, a couple of singles. That's a lot of grav plates. And then we've got a million little pistons. These are going to be a pain to build. But if you're spending sort of 250 quid or so on a model, you expect to do a lot of building with it. You'd be a bit disappointed if you if it didn't take very long to build. So we've got a thousand of these. They will look all right. If not the most exciting parts in the world to build. Right, next bag. Let's do another big one. Way. Cool, this has got some weight to it. So it looks like here we have got the side of the tank, another bit that is prime for a horrible mold slip. But again, we look like we've got away with it. That's very tasty. Big old chunk of resin there. And another one. Lovely. Uh, this looks like the front of the tank. Lovely little bit of detail in there. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. There it is. And again, very nicely cast. Well done, Forge World, so far. Have a little bit of detail here. Oh, no, that's just not on there. A little bit of a slip down there. Look. That's the first sort of major one I've seen, but. It shouldn't be too obvious once that's on the model and it should be fairly easy to clean up. So not too bad. Another front piece. Oh, we've looked at that, haven't we? Uh, what else have we got? A couple of these funny bits. Oh, they're going to be a pain to get the uh, flash out the middle of them. Um, but it's doable. I'll just have to sit there with the scalpel. And then uh, whatever that is, a detail piece there. Right, I'm running out of desk space here. Just have to try and clear some of this off. The number of parts in this thing is mad. 
Right, last bag. Right, so we've got, oh, look at that plasma. Very nice, very cool. We've got a couple of these um, macro plasmas. That looks like some sort of Laz Talon or something. I don't know. That looks like the housing for our guns. Too bad, no real slips or anything there, no warpage really. Overall, I am really pleased with this model. This is one of the best that I've done in a little while. So, uh, here we have all the parts. Now, I'm going to go and take these. I'm going to give them a good scrubbing uh, with a toothbrush. And then I'm going to be building. That's going to take a little while. So, I'll be back to you when I have built this monstrosity. So, we can take a look at the finished product. Okay, so we are a few days uh, on now. And a good few hours. And I have finished building the Astraeus uh, super heavy tank. Um, it's a bit of a beast. It's so big that I'm having trouble filming it. It's that large. Uh, it looks great, I think. I do love it. It's on its base at the moment, but it's not glued down, so it's why it spins around a little bit. Um, we will, or I will do some more work on it. It's not quite finished, but it is assembled. So let me just talk you through it. So. On the top, we've got our twin accelerator cannons. Now, as a bit of a theme with this, the actual fitment was very, very loose inside here. So I've had to do a little bit of work. Um, initially, on the turret itself, uh, there's a magnet inside there, you can see. And then I've also put a magnet down in the socket. And that just sort of keeps it on and stops it flopping about. There are two pegs that go in from the uh, two guns itself into this center section. Sorry, other way around. Center section into the two guns. And that's what allows it to pivot up and down like this. But they were way, way, way too loose. The um, They were just flopping around all over the place. So I've actually, uh, you can probably see it better from underneath. I've actually cut them out completely. And I've replaced that with two magnets, one in the gun and one in the body. And that's given it enough resistance that this is now quite smooth, but also much slower moving, which I think works a lot better. That's that. Um, the same with these side guns. So at the moment, you can see I've got the uh, macro plasma on here. Now, these are magneted exactly the same way into the socket, which gives them a bit of resistance. But these are actually the other way around in some ways because they were in so stiff they wouldn't rotate but they weren't so stiff that they wouldn't fall out if you put the model on its side, which was a little bit annoying. So again, magnet inside the, uh, the hull itself, magnet inside there, and that gives it enough resistance to stop rotating. I've also magneted the gun onto there as well. You know that clipping on there. There's a little magnet inside there and a little magnet on the back of the gun. And that goes on there nicely. I've also magneted the options, so that's the Laz Rippers, um, which has got a cool name. So I thought we'd magnet those on. Um, the last bit of magneting that has been done is in this front nose here. Now, I've not got this little turret so it can move. I could have put a load of magnets in it to try and do it. But to be honest, uh, I'm not going to move that. And it was better just to glue it, I think. But I have magneted the back of these heavy bolters and the LAS cannons. And they just clip in there, depending on what you want to use. Um, actually, there's one more piece of magneting. On the back here, we've got the... Uh, void shield and I think you're supposed to glue these in or leave them floating but if they float they're very loose so again taken the bottom off there swapped it out for a magnet magnet in the hole and they clip on there so when you're playing the game if you lose a void shield you can actually take one off to, to represent that um, on the back there we've got the other little storm bolt turret and that's just glued because it's too small and the tiny bit of movement just wasn't worth the uh, extra effort to try and make that work um, there was quite a lot of work that needed to be done on this to put it together. The uh, These bits are still a little bit wonky. They were quite badly sized. They needed a good chunk trimmed off the ends here um, to get them to fit properly. And they needed heating up and bending around a lot with the, um, 
with the hairdryer. Cat. Um, other areas that needed quite a lot of bending, some of these um, repulsor plates weren't on very well either, and that did cause me some trouble. I could reshoot this tape, but I'm not going to. We're just going to have a cat in it. Um, barrels are super warped. They just needed a bit of hair dry, though, to be honest. That's not a problem. Um, one area I'm not so happy with, you can't see too badly from the top. But if I just take this up and flip it over, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Um, on the underside, there are some monumental panel gaps for this model. They are absolutely huge, and that's not fitting. It is fitted together correctly. Um, there's great big pins running through here to give it a bit of stability and a bit of strength. Uh, but the panel gaps are massive. It's going to need a lot of green stuff to get rid of them. Now, to be honest, I'm going to glue it onto its base. So I'm not totally worried about the bottom, as long as I can see them. But it is still a little bit disappointing and you can see a little bit from the front there so I'm going to have to glue in around there and glue in around this section as well needs to be um, tidied up because the, the panel gaps are too big and you're going to be able to see them and I don't like that. Um, it's not the worst model I've ever built but it certainly could be better for the amount of money that it costs. That being said, do I think it's worth it? In as much as any of these models are worth it, it's, a couple of, it's more than a couple of hundred quid. It's a huge honk of resin. It took probably, with all the cleanup and stuff, it took probably 15 hours, 20 hours maybe to, but will have taken 20 hours probably to build by the time I've gone in with the, um, the gap filler and cleaned all that up. There was quite a lot to do. Um, when you chuck in all that pinning and the magnetization, and I don't see the magnetizer. All right, you, the options, yeah, sure. I didn't need to. I could have fixed the options that you couldn't swap them out but on this kind of expensive model you're going to want to swap them out and for things like the ones in the turret i don't view that as optional i think that has to be done or it's just going to be flopping around or permanently glued and that's not really what you want from a model like this um other mold defects there weren't too many it was a few slips and things but nothing that was too outrageous to clean up really it's just the poor fitting with the kind of front and the back section and on these two kind of wings um, all of these needed bending in shape a little bit uh, but that again that wasn't too big a deal and that's sort of what you expect when you've got these sort of flat pieces of resin so that's not too bad um, so yeah the first video of the year we've just ticked over a thousand subscribers so thanks guys for doing that uh, we're really excited about it and I thought I'd build something a bit special now I've got the hours of filling and painting to do so thanks very much for watching if you like these sorts of videos let me know in the comments below uh, I've got stacker models that we can do like this and um yeah subscribe responsibly and remember that it is only a game and you should really be enjoying your hobby if you're not having fun don't do it uh, especially when it comes to this sort of thing because this is a bit of a slog if it's not something you enjoy doing cheers guys catch you on the next one